God bless you. May please be seated. You are welcome to the month of December. By the grace of God, we are entering into the new year triumphantly in the name of Jesus. I'm aware that many of our brethren have joined us virtually. And so if you don't mind, please, let's give the Lord a big hand as we welcome the online church. <laughs> Glory be to God. The Lord has given us a very interesting theme for this month of December. And he says simply, done deal. I've always told the people on the left that get excited as the people on the right. We can't hear your excitement. <laughs> now let the people on the right wait and let's get some hallelujah from the people on the left. Now just to confirm my feeling, can you shout your own hallelujah? Now let everybody shout it really loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Our joy will last forever in Jesus' name. In case you were wondering what's going on here, well, the shouting side is the winning side. Let the winners shout one more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Within the theme, Don't Deal, this second service, the message is titled The Promise Keeper. The Promise Keeper. We'll read Acts of Apostles 28, verse 16. Acts 28, verse 16 will be our text. Now, when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him. From the beginning of this year, we started studying the book of the Acts of the Apostles from chapter 1. And then we've moved into several of the chapters, and now we are in chapter 28. Because man is limited, you cannot always rely on the promise or promises of man. Man is very, very limited. Man may mean well, but because he's limited. Remember a brother who was invited to come to Nigeria you know, because his uncle was in government and I promised him some very big contract. I mean, he went so arrogantly that he didn't even remember to tell the pastor. So he got to Lagos, Nigeria, called the uncle, or the brother, I think was the uncle, and said, well, I'm now in Nigeria. I said, yeah, come to Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, tomorrow, and the contract will be waiting for you. Well, overnight, there was a cabinet reshuffle. And in the morning, they had sacked the uncle. And here comes the end of the contract. You can't sack God. You can't dethrone him. Nobody appointed him, so he cannot be, he cannot be fired. He cannot be sacked. Can you clap for this God? That nobody, cannot, nobody can fire him. Nobody can dethrone him. Nobody can remove him. The promises made by man can be affected by the changes in the situation of man. Because man has the tendency to lie, the promises made by man can be fake. Numbers 23, 19, the A part has a very terrible testimony about, <laughs> about men. And men is not gender here, human beings. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. In other words, <laughs> men can be liars nor a son of man that he should repent. Because man is man, man can sometimes be full of empty promises. Peter was so sure that we never denied Jesus, even if others did. But not once, but three times, three times he denied the Lord. It is very dangerous to put your trust in man and depend absolutely on the promises made by man. In fact, Jeremiah 17, 5 has this to say. Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus said the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. The word came from the mouth of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man. You cannot trust man enough or trust a system enough that your heart begins to depart from the Lord. It is dangerous. 
Many who had put their trust, for example, in vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination, they now know that whereas there is nothing wrong in taking the vaccination, by the way, I took, I took already, because I don't believe in the, <laughs> in the, the conspiracy around the uh, mark of the beast. They don't know their Bible. But let's leave that. The point I'm making is, you cannot trust anything so seriously that your heart is departing from God. Many who have put their trust in the vaccination, they now know that where there is nothing wrong in taking the vaccination, everything is wrong with people who put their trust in the vaccination. I mean, they even made some videos uh, of any, someone who has taken a vaccination and they walk like this in front of a, of a train or a truck coming, saying, I'm fully vaccinated, truck, come. Now, when you begin to behave like that, you are losing your mind. Because you are beginning to trust a system to the point where your heart slowly is moving away from God. As a matter of fact, I'm not a scientist uh, in that sense. But some people have taken the vaccination and died. Some took the vaccination a few days after they got COVID back. Now, the many variants showing up now, they don't even know whether the vaccination can catch it. You can't trust any system. People have lived in America so much that they trust this system, that this system cannot fail. But the system has failed over and over and over again. The only promise keeper, ever faithful, ever sure, is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the Almighty God. He is the one who can never fail. He is the promise keeper. When he says, I will do it, he will do it. Nobody put him in place. No one can remove him in place. Nobody put him as the king. No one can dethrone him because nobody enthroned him. Come on, give my king, the Lord Jesus, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who is the one who was, the one who is to come. Give him a clap offering. He is the advocate. He is the bread of life. He is the chief cornerstone. He is our deliverer. His name is Iman. Emmanuel is the first and the last. He's the good shepherd. He's the holy one of Israel. The I am that I am. Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lamb of God, the way, the truth, and the life. He's the almighty. He's the promise keeper. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Shammah, the ever-present God. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Give him praise. Celebrate him. He is the promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. Glory be to God. The promise keeper is unlimited. Jesus Christ. With him, nothing is impossible. Luke 137. Luke 137. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's why the promise keeper can make the family on deportation list to be given a green card. Oh, this family... They were already on deportation list. But in the final analysis of the matter, within a few days after deportation, came green card. Only God that is unlimited, only God that is a promise keeper can do that. That's why the woman without a womb can become a joyful mother. The promise keeper is faithful. What he says he will do will be done. Numbers 23, 19, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, shall he not do it? Had he spoken it, shall he not make it good? The promise of greatness made to Joseph, despite all the challenges, came to pass. The promise of the throne made to David came to pass, despite all opposition. The promise of deliverance made to Israel became a reality against all the forceful opposition of Pharaoh. The promise of Isaac made to Abraham and Sarah came to pass against diagnosis, prognosis, and all the gnosis. Come on, go ahead. Give this Lord a bigger. Nothing can stop this God. It doesn't matter the prognosis over your life. It doesn't matter the diagnosis over your life. I don't know what gnosis are left, but whatever it is, God will bypass all the gnosis and will bring you to the point of celebration. Come on, give him a big hand of praise. Celebrate him. He is the promise keeper. Glory be to God. Genesis 1, verses, Genesis 21, 1 and 2. Genesis 21, 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said. 
And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. He's the promise keeper. He makes a promise, he will fulfill it. He made a promise to Paul, Apostle Paul, that he will witness in Rome like he did in Jerusalem. And although there were many, many conspiracies, opposition to stop the promise, Paul nonetheless arrived at Rome, witnessed in Rome according, according to the promise of God. In case you are not here when we are studying chapter 23 of Acts in the month of November, Acts 23, 11 and 12, Acts 23, 11 and 12, and the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also at Rome, verse 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a call, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. It doesn't matter how formidable the opposition may be. The promise of God must come to pass. Oh, they said, Paul, you are not going to get to Rome. We have come together in a conspiracy. We bound ourselves under the oath. We are not going to eat. We are not going to drink. You are not going to Rome. But in chapter 20, our text, <laughs> Paul arrived in Rome, preached in Rome. Uh, people are taught you are not going to get to December. But you got to August. Now you got to September. You got to October. You got to November. Now you are in December. I am confident in God that you are going to get to 2022. If the Lord tarries in his coming, you will see many, many, many more years. Together we will rejoice and celebrate the promise keeper in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the number of people conspiring against the promise of God. They are sure to fail. Because God is the promise keeper. Against all odds, Paul arrived in Rome according to the promise of God. Acts 28 verse 16, the test we took, Acts 28 verse 16. Now when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him. God's promises for his children for every season are contained in the word of God. And I bring you the promise of God. For the rest of this year, Psalm 65, verse 11. Psalm 65, verse 11. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy parts drop fatness. Let me hear a believing amen. amen. I love it from the New Living Translation. It says, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. How many people receive that promise? Come on, let me hear you shout a really big hallelujah. As promises are contained in promissory notes, so are the promises of God contained in the word of God. A promissory note is a financial instrument that contains a written promise by one party to pay another party a definite sum of amount. Now, except you take certain steps, you may have a valid promissory note for large sums of money and still go hungry. There are four steps to the actualization of the promise from the promise keeper. I will go over them very quickly. It will be time for us to pray. Number one, realization of the promise is the first step to the actualization of the promise. Realization of the promise is the first step to the actualization of the promise. Many of us don't even know <laughs> the promise of God for us for this season. And if you don't know, how can you benefit from it? Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. Daniel 9, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. You must know the promise of God. Daniel here understood that it wouldn't be more than 70 years before deliverance will come to, to, to Israel. It is difficult to actualize what you have not realized. It is difficult to actualize what you have not realized. The promissory note left in the bag remains a piece of paper, even though it is money. So is the promise from God left under the pillow 
remains a book, even though it's a blessing. You know, people, they put the, the, the Bible under the pillow, sleep on it. Lord, I have, it's a, if you don't know what the promise is in there, it's just a book. <laughs> Glory be to God. A Christmas was coming in a particular year, and one man received many gift cards. And then so he just put and they see people, they don't know more than, you know, Christmas card, Christmas card, Christmas card. He was very angry with God that Christmas because he was so broke that the family didn't have money to buy chicken. It was a terrible Christmas. But, you know, a, a Christian, I mean, just took it like that. But by January, it was just, you know, emptying dirty things at home. Then open one of the Christmas cards. Inside of it was big money. Somebody had put money inside the Christmas card. And he, himself and the family went hungry. What you don't realize, you may not actualize. There are promises of God in scriptures for this season. And I've brought one to you. I believe it with everything in me. And I'm believing God with you that you will believe it too. Because it is difficult to actualize what you have not realized. My wife has shared this testimony before. I probably have shared it once or twice before. We, we, we traveled to, uh, you know, to the United Kingdom, London to be specific. And I went to Nigeria and then she stayed back in, the, in, the, in, in London and then I, I came back so we could return together. And then, we, I mean, she had, she bought, I think she upgraded us to premium economy, which was okay. So we got to British Airways. We have not flown British Airways at that time in many years. We have no frequent flyer program with British Airways. So, I just took my boarding pass, and I was, I mean, we bought, we bought, we bought economy, upgraded to uh, premium economy, so we, I was headed to the gate. My wife said, we have first class. <laughs> I said, be dreaming. <laughs> because when we were coming, you know, oh, God is good. When we were coming out from the plane, you will pass through... <laughs> We be business and see those places. Ah, my wife said, one day I'm going to, you know, be in this, you know, business class. So I, I, I said, amen inside. <laughs> so he said, let's go to the lounge. We have business class. I said, did you buy business class? He said, but this body power I'm looking is business class. I said, when, when they embarrass you, just tell them that your husband had warned you. You, you just wanted to be embarrassed. So okay, I'm going. So she was going, she was going. I was headed towards the economy gate, but I was using one eye to look at, so I can go and rescue her when they embarrass her and say, sorry, sorry. But uh, as she entered, I saw the fellow back on and say, go inside. Ah, I ran. I said, we, we are together, we are together. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> so it was at that time, for the first time, I saw that she was 3A, I was 3B. I was so fixed in my mind that there was no way. You are, you are not a frequent flyer here. You are not. How can you be? Man, it was a beautiful one. Oh, I slept. You know, when you want to console yourself, you say, whether you fly a business or you fly economy, we will arrive together. You are just consoling yourself. There's a difference between the two. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. The Lord will promote you. And now we very, very soon, in the name of Jesus, glory be to God. But the point is, it is difficult to actualize what you have not realized. You must realize this promise to actualize it. Number two, very quickly, it takes the asking for the receiving. It takes the asking for the receiving. The presentation of the promissory note is required for the disbursement of the funds. John 16, 24. John 16, 24. It at all have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that you may, your joy may be full. God is saying the reason you have not received is because you have not asked. Imagine somebody has written you a fat check. Just put it under your, under your pillow. There has to be a, the, the asking before the receiving. That's the way it works. Even though my wife had this body pass and I did as well, we needed to ask for a place in the lounge. 
They won't let you into the plane. You have to show the body part. You must ask. I, I have a seat here. Number three. You must hold onto the promise in faith, even to the last minute. Think the full actualization. You have to hold on. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. For it's faithful that promised. Many times we, especially at the time like this, people by December 5, like today, say, well, the year is over, so let's wait for another year. Ah! When God created the heaven and the earth only in six days. When at the gate of Samaria, where there had been terrible famine, 24 hours, there was abundance. How can you give up so quickly? Oh, it's not over for you. Say, it is not over for you. It is not, this year is not over. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Ronti shared a testimony many years ago of, of a, a choir person. The Lord told the lady she was going to buy, get a car that year. I think it was middle of the year. But then July became August, September, October. By December, she thought, well, maybe it's going to be Christmas gift. And Christmas, nothing money came. Well, maybe it'll be Boxing Day, you know. <laughs> but anyway, on the 31st, she was to lead praises, praise and worship. But she wasn't like grumbling. You know how some people are disappointed that God, you mean the, the promise of a car was empty promise and grumble and all that. She grabbed the microphone and she led the praise and worship. And then once it was just a few minutes, I think maybe three, four, five minutes into the new year, somebody walked to her. I don't know all the reasons, but God wanted me to wait till now. To hand over this car key unto you. That year did not pass. That woman got the blessing. I don't know when it will be, but this year will not pass before your testimony will reach you. Come on, let me hear believing amen. Those who still have faith in God, let me hear you shout a really loud hallelujah. You must hold on to God to the last minute. Hold on to Him. Hold on to that promise. Don't let go of the promise. Because if you promise, then it will make it good. If you throw away the promissory note before maturity, you lose all the benefits there. You lose everything. Number four, finally. The identity of the beneficiary is important to the disbursement of the benefit. If your ID is compromised, you will not receive the promise on the promissory note. I've told you before. You know, Bank of America once changed my PIN, and I thought I memorized it, the new one. I, I didn't change it to the one I'm familiar with. In fact, by now, I've not even changed my wife complained that. <laughs> but, but now I have, it, I have it in my head. But sometimes it's good to have a very clumsy PIN. <laughs> if you have one, two, three, four, they will guess one of these days. <laughs> but anyway, I got to the bank. I wanted money out. I had money in my account. I just missed one digit. Money didn't come out. Gas was out in the whatever. In my car, I wanted to, to buy gas. I got the pain wrong. Where your ID is compromised, even though the promise is yours, you won't get it. The promise to witness in Rome was made to Paul, not to Paulina. Paulina cannot claim the promise meant for Paul. We have a year end promise from God in Psalm 65 11. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. That has your name on it. Can I hear your amen? amen? The promise to crown the year with bountiful harvest and overflowing abundance is made to the children of God, loading the clouds with sacrifices of praises. How do I know that? Psalm 67, 5 and 6. Psalm 7, 5 and 6. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield our increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. So if God is saying, this year you will end with abundance of harvest, bountiful harvest, then you must be, you must qualify by virtue of Psalm 67, 5 and 6. 
The people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. What will then happen? Then the heart will yield an increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. Those who are ready to load the clouds with praises, they are guaranteed to have bountiful harvest. That's why I want to tell you, once it takes us of praise, it's not the wisdom of any man. It is God giving us an opportunity for bountiful harvest now and into the new year. So if I were you, you are planning how many hours you want to do. You want to be sacrificial. You want to commit to praising God regardless of what is going on. Because there's a promise waiting to be claimed. Amen. Let me give you one more illustration to let you see that this promise of God to us is for those who are committed to sacrificial praise. Second Chronicles chapter 20. If you begin to read from verse 1, three FT nations came against Jehoshaphat and Judah. They were going to waste them. They had prayed, they had fasted. But God said, just sing praises. So let's pick it from verse 22. Second Chronicles 20, 22. You know, maybe to about 26 there. And when they began to sing and, and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Monsia, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Monsia, utterly slay and destroyed them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of, of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Verse 24. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. Verse 25. And when Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches and the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. Why? They chose to praise God. The Lord is about to crown this year with abundance of harvest. But he's waiting for those who will praise him. Apostle Paul knew this. So while he was in prison, the Bible says, Acts 16, 25 and 26, at midnight, they began to praise God. They prayed and praised God. And God came down. And there was deliverance. There are four steps to actualization of the promise from the promise keeper. One, realization of the promise is the first step to the actualization of the promise. Two, it takes the asking for the receiving. Three, you must hold on to the promise in faith even to the last minute till the full actualization. The identity of the beneficiary is important to the disbursement of the benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is your turn. 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 During the war in Liberia, a missionary woman was there with his children. There was no food. They were, they were, they were going hungry. People were dying. And suddenly, she called her children, and they got empty plates. They were using the silverware to make drums and they were making music, and they were rejoicing and dancing. The rebels came with a truckload of food. They said, there's life in that place. They knocked the door. They said, we are not here to harm you. There's this lorry load of food. Whenever we are hungry, we'll come here. We want to store the food here. You can eat as much as you want. They never came back. They had more than enough throughout the war, and the Lord sustained them. I said, you are next in line. Say so you are next in line for the abundance. Rise, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Lift your hands to him, worship him. Give him praise, 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 worship him, worship him, worship him, give him praise, give him praise. He's worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be praised. He's the way maker, he's the promise keeper. Celebrate him, worship him, honor him, adore him. Thank him that we are in December. Thank him for what he's doing already. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Father, we thank you. Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Raise your right hand and say, Father, please crown the year 2021 for me and my family with bountiful harvests and overflowing abundance. Remember, 
he takes the asking for the receiving say father i ask please crown the year 2021 for me and my family with bountiful harvest and overflowing abundance in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we are praying say father help me and strengthen me to hold on to you and your promises till the very end in the name of jesus come on pray oh help me strengthen me to hold on to you and your promises till the very very end in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed say father make the one state house of praise the global platform to crown the year with bountiful harvest and overflowing blessing make the 168 hours of praise the global platform to crown the year with bountiful harvest and overflowing abundance come on pray talk to god thank you lord in jesus mighty name we are praying finally say father as i praise you today let my journey to overflowing abundance begins today come on pray as i praise you today because i'm going to praise you let my journey to overflowing abundance begin today let it begin today father as i praise you today let my journey to overflowing abundance let it begin today in the name of jesus thank you father blessed be your name oh god in jesus mighty name we have prayed the promise keeper we bring to fulfillment all these promises concerning you and your family in the name of jesus for every one of us and our families will end this year with abundance of harvest from god in the name of jesus the one state hours of praise will be the global platform for bountiful harvest in the mighty name of jesus from now on we enter into the realm of the abundance of harvest even as we begin to praise the lord in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father jesus name we have prayed now if you heard this message and you are not born again you are taking a dangerous risk because the life without christ is full of crisis the only one unlimited the only one that can keep promise is jesus so give your life to him all this while you have been coming to church and playing religion that won't save you come to jesus in him is hope in him is life he's the only promise keeper your uncle will disappoint you he may surprise you your spouse may even disappoint you that's why i'm welcoming you to give your life to him so if you are here you want to surrender to jesus then just lift your right hand above your head and if you are virtual do the same thing and pray this simple prayer say lord jesus i surrender my life to you i give my life to you save my soul i confess my sins i repent of them lord god almighty let me also hand this here with abundance of harvest i am born again because because i give my life to you I confess with my mouth, I believe in my, mouth, in, my, in my heart that you are the Lord and Savior of mankind. Save my soul, Lord. If you pray that prayer, I can assure you, Jesus is on your inside already. And I pray for you that this journey, this decision you have made, the Almighty God will take you from here and it shall be from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. So if you gave your life to Christ, whether here or virtual, if you are here, keep your hand up or see us after service. The ushers will give you a little slip. We just want to continue to pray for you. But if you are virtual, please, the number on the screen is the right number to contact us with. We want to help your growth in faith. And all will be well with you in the name of Jesus. If you receive your own this morning, go ahead, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs>